There goes another hole. Oh, we have daylight. That'll go in there and then. Oh, that'll be cool. Our water, our freshwater fill system, huh? Yep. Yeah. It's time to do some more plumbing. <laughs> this stuff, it's always fun. Uh, but, you know, when you're doing it from scratch like this, you get to make choices about where things are located. And I have a very limited hole over here for that water pump and the accumulator tank to go into. And I think instead of making short hoses, I'm going to put them at the end of big loops. So it looks like I have more hose in there that I need, but it makes it much easier to connect and disconnect the hose. If you ever have to do a repair, if you have some hose, you can slack out. So that's what I'm talking about when I said have some slack in the line. I was almost going to have this mounted over the other way. So when I looked at info, what SureFlow's info on how to repair this pump, this is how they actually had it installed, which makes perfect sense because the two things that you would need to adjust during use is this set screw and this set screw here. And if it, if you know how to do it and this thing, you think this thing's broken, you can simply change out this switch right here. Usually there's a little micro switch in there that only costs eight bucks. And that's usually what goes out on this. So this one here, I've already, it was one that I used and it went out and I put a new switch in there. That's why I already had it. So that might help some of you. I don't know, whatever. Now when I come off of this, with this side here, I'll loop around and come back to the accumulator tank, do the same thing and have some slack hose. Because the other thing now in this orientation, if I have any leaks, I still got to tighten that down. But if I have any leaks or drips, they're going to be right here uh, where I can see them and I can easily access them and tighten them up instead of having to go down the bottom of the hole. So there are some things to think about if you're putting in a RV water pump. Okay, so here that is all connected up down there. I got slack in the line so it's easier to make these connections. And this is an accumulator tank, which they used to come pre-charged, but they don't now. So if you buy one, you need to charge it before you use it. But anyhow, to charge it, you take this cap off and it's just an air fitting, like pumping up a tire. So I got that charged up. The pump's connected. And look what happened in here. <laughs> the floor has been left loose so that I could get in here to do this part, but that section right there is the only one that's hard to access. So I'm ready to, uh, I can do those connections later because I'm missing the fitting, but I'm ready to get the shower wall roughed in here and I can put the shower spigot in there and actually get those connections going. I got so crowded in here yesterday I stopped filming stuff. But I got the shower wall roughed in here. And I drilled a hole through the floor for the shower drain. And I just got done installing that shower drain in the bottom of the pan. Which it says no caulk mechanical seal. But I put some silicone in there anyhow. <laughs> so all I got to do is drop that down in the hole and anchor it to the wall and that'll be in. What you doing? What you doing? I'm filming you. I'm pexing. Tell you what, this little compact 
crimp tool. It's awesome, huh? See, it's got a little light there that comes on when you're done. See that? Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? How cool is that? But yeah, pretty much. I couldn't get in here with my big crimpers. Yeah. I have the other crimpers, but I don't have them here. Anyhow, they wouldn't fit in here anyhow. Man, this is a petticoat junction here. Well, you're, you're in super tight corners too. As you can see, we've got the floor pushed back. Um, well, we got cold water up to the shower. shower. Cold water into the water heater. Now we just need to tee off this way and get cold water to the kitchen sink. Cold water over to the sink, yeah. It's like a maze. For any of you that didn't know in Shelly's previous life, she used to shear sheep. Look at her. <laughs> Look at her cutting that wool. It's almost like cutting batting for, for quilting. It reminds me a lot of quilting batting. So we've got this gap right here that isn't covered. What was that? The vent pipe is going to go right up here. Right up that thing, guys. All the way but to the top. This front corner was smashed in. And they had a little lightweight patch over it. it yeah, it didn't look very good. Well, it was super lightweight, huh? Yeah. I mean, I could bend it with my fingers. Yeah. Uh, so I have some heavier aluminum. I'm going to put my vent pipe in here. Then I'm going to repair this patch with some heavier aluminum. I see you're going up through our floor. It goes right up the corner of the shower. So the gray tank's going to be over there. So this vent will just drop down and go to the gray tank and the shower drain. The shower drain is right here. Oh, look at that. So it'll come down and go over to the gray tank. And the sink is on this side too. Yep. So it'll drop down. Easy. It's a good thing whoever designed your layout was thinking, huh? Look at that. There is our daylight hole we were looking for, guys. So we've got these sections back here at the back of the bus in the corner here that I'm going to try to stuff some insulation in. I've already cut it down in half and stuffed it in, but it's still not quite full enough. So I'm going to take these little cutoffs and stuff back in there and see if I can get that a little bit fuller in there. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better, guys. Just by putting that little bit of pe that little piece in there, taking it all the way down, filled that up really nice. I'll show you here on this side. There's like a flange that I can put my fingers back behind. See, so that's not very full. So I want to fill that in a little bit more. So rather than poking anything up there, I kind of saw this on their on their website for this. Is you just tear off little pieces and stuff it gently back into tight places. So I'm just gonna come in and fill this wherever these wires are up with little pieces of batting, or not batting, insulation. <laughs> so I have to come up this and go out there. Ooh. So I got this figured. If I cut that out, I, could, I wanted to go out right there, but the outside, uh, that corner cap, some of it angles back, so I had to scoot back to here. So this will have to come over farther. But once the hole is in there, yeah. That'll, that'll fit right up there. Fit right behind there. Cool. I hope another Keep your hole. Keep your fingers crossed, you guys. Do you guys see the hole up there? <laughs> oh, we can't see Randy too much reflection. So, oh, the pipe will fit through, so that'll be good. 
Okay, guys, I got that upper header up there on the top, insulated as best I can until we decide what we're gonna put up there. And now my new challenge is we wanna insulate this corner here, but I've got to stuff insulation back down in that hole there where the overflow water pipe goes out behind our fresh water tank. I'm going to do the same thing and just tear batting and poke it down um, with a rod until I get that hole, that cavity stuffed full of batting back there. Okay, guys, here's what I've got going on. I'm just tearing it into chunks and then I've got this water line hose that I'm going to just push it down in and it goes quite a ways down there. There, just hit bottom. So got quite a bit on both sides. I've got to do that. I got my corner filled up. Huh? Pretty cool. Good job. So here's that finished vent coming out the side. I had to stay down low because the ribs are up here. I had to stay back because of this. Now I'll put a piece of expanded metal in there to keep uh, birds or bugs or anything from going in. Should be dandy. So here's that vent pipe from the inside. Back behind the shower walls. Sometimes you do what you gotta do. I had to get it out. Didn't want to weaken the corner. That's the only way I could see to get out, either that or straight up through the roof, which still would have had to jog over. So that's the way I chose to do it. Won't need a rain cap because it's got that lip hanging over it. And I think when I put the bug screen on it, everything will be fine. It's getting to the end of the day, but our um, second pair of hinges came in for the bed today, right? Yep. And so we want to get those installed um, because we just felt like it needed a little bit more support under there. And we'll have plenty of support now. Well, it won't stay open is the problem. Yeah. See, it's sagging in the middle too. Yeah, you can tell it's sagging a little bit. Let's see if I can come up here closer. So we're going to put one on each side and that'll be golden. The screws are coming in from both sides, so I'm angling these ones this way. I'll angle the other ones that way so they don't hit in the middle. Right? Oh yeah, because they're on the opposite side of each other. Yeah. So here's the lower bed. We're too cheap to buy sanded plywood, so we patched the coarser one. But now with those new hinges in the center, it's well supported, so. This just goes up really easy. Yeah. So there you go. You want to end the episode? Hey, we're just so grateful for all the support and the love we um, feel from you guys. And hope you're enjoying this journey we're on as much as we are. And we'll just catch you in the next video. Bye.